All right, welcome everyone to the uh, Ed Belliger Indie Contributors Working Group call for July 30th, 2024. Uh, today on the agenda, we have the Indie Quarterly Report, uh, the Ubuntu 22.04 upgrade, if there are any updates on that, um, the Indie Charter document, and then Indie Bezu project, um, any updates and discussion there. We are, of course, recording this call and it'll be posted on the meeting page. We are following the Linux Foundation antitrust policy and the Hyperledger code of conduct. And if you'd like to put your name on the attendees list, that would be great. Uh, let's see, looks like all familiar faces here, but um, does anyone have any announcements or additional topics they would like to add before we jump into the agenda? Um, I believe there's a, a a move potentially away from uh, indie to a web format that uh, uh, BC Gov has been working on. Is that something that we want to track here, or is there going to be a separate call for that type of work? Um, some insights on that would be helpful. Is this related to so did TDW? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Stephen, I don't know if you want to jump in on that. I I think we we could, we could certainly discuss that if we want to. Sure. Um, we we've, we've been working for a while. Um, BC Gov team has been working for a while on a web based did method. We're seeing um many going to uh, many organizations going to did web and. Did web we find in, insufficient? <laughs> um, so we started some work um, oh a year or more ago, thinking that a a carry based did method, um, web based did method might might work, and we worked on that for a while, and then discovered that's really not going to be where we want to be, and um, contains a whole lot more overhead. So we switched to. Um, developing um, a thing called did TDW, which um, trust did web is what the TDW means. And it is a, um, <clears throat> it, it, what is looking like more and more to be an extension to did web and maybe merged into did web. We'll see if, if that happens, but um, very similar to did web, but instead of um, the published artifact being an actual, you know, static did document. It is a log of a series of of did did documents, so that you can recreate the full history and it's verifiable, and has a number of security features around that. So that's what did TDW is. Um, there's a spec. There's um, two implementations, and we're going to be starting a working group shortly. There's been lots of um, <laughs> uh, steps to getting a working group going, and uh, we think we've got a path to that shortly. And so that's um, what we're working on. Patrick, uh, you got your hand up. Just a question. Uh, so the one of the big use case for Indy currently is to store Anon Threads object for verification. And Indy yeah. does provide this anonymity uh, unlinkability. Uh, with TDW, I understand the goal is to be able to also publish Anon Threads on TDW. However, then you go back to the web server method, which may impact privacy. Um, so what's the goal here? Is the goal to do a full shift to a web server-based uh, system to store an on object? Or will in the, uh, does uh, a blockchain still have enough privacy feature to keep using it? At this point, the intention is to go to um, a uh entirely to a, the web-based did method. It may or may not, there, there's, <clears throat> uh, it really comes down to where re the revocation registry is put. The, the rest of the objects aren't that relevant for privacy. 
because okay. they can be picked up earlier. Um, the big one is the revocation registry and figuring out what to do with that. So yeah, um, it's true because I could that could be cached. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah. So yeah. we're working on on different ways of doing that, but yes, that is um, the intention is to go to web methods. Um, and there are different ways that you can um, store and on credits objects in the same place as the did, or you could even store, you know, revocation registries elsewhere. So that's yeah. a possibility as well. So we're thinking of both of those things. And will the, for revocation, will the goal be to use the current revocation objects and move in there, or it's gonna jump straight to defining a new revocation with like something like an grids V2? Or oh, no, we foresee it would be, this? The, the first pass would be an on creds one. Yeah. The non okay. V2 revocation is not far enough along and not integrated enough. So yeah, still be version one at this point. And is this going to raise concern for sort of centralizing data on the web server? Or because a big question now is, uh, or maybe it's a misconception, but a lot of people, you know, they get uh, hang on to the decentralized aspect of the blockchain? Um, uh, we don't think so. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, blockchain does not equal decentralized to us, so... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the term decentralized can mean many things. Uh... Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. But for example, all of these, um, one of the big questions we get is where to put um, non-governmental um, DIDs and, and related objects. And if you can put it on your own web server, well, that's pretty decentralized, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up, Kim. Did you have any more questions or, or discussion points related to that? Um, uh, I, I think we should uh, continue to get status updates on the work of that in this meeting. Yeah, that's a good idea. Glad to. Yeah. I will add that to future agendas. So thank you. Okay. Great. Any other any other topics to add or announcements? Um, very minor, but we're looking at uh, uh, trying to update a package in the in the plenum library. It's a package called New JSON. I think it's a dependency of JSON pickles. There's a, a few vulnerabilities, so we're looking at trying to upgrade that package. Okay. Cool. Thanks for the update. All right, let's see. With that, I think we can go ahead and jump into the agenda. Um, Stephen, I'll, I'll pass it over to you for the Indie quarterly report. Would you like to screen share? Oh, um, hadn't thought of that. If you could just open it up, that'd be sure. fine. Yeah. yeah, got it right here. Um, yeah, jump to files changed. So, um, the Hyperledger Indie Aries and Anoncreds quarterly reports are all due this week. So I've um, done an update um, <clears throat> on the Indie one, um, put in things. I'm not, um, Renata, particularly for you, I'm not um, well versed in what's going on in Indie Bezu. So I wanted you to make sure you saw this and, and, um, sent over or included um, what updates you'd like to see included in that. Um, but other than that, I've got most of the information there. Um, oh, I've got a duplicate line in there, but the LF, the insights LF, the insights, LFX insights is not working well. If you click on that, actually, could you click on that? Um, open that link up. See if you get anything. Hmm. Yeah, things scroll. If you scroll down a little, you'll see some stuff there. But the 
the main graphs just spin. So I don't know what's going on with that, but I did pick up most of the information from the lower um, part of it. I think I got everything there. Um, the basic update as far as contributions is um, down about 50%, both in, in terms of commits and contributors. So that's referenced in that paragraph above. Um, uh, I'm not sure that Indy Bezu, now that I think about that, but I can't see it, whether Indy Bezu is included in that. And actually, and now that I think about it, when I think of who the commits are from, I'm almost certain it's not. Um, so I might, I'll, I'll probably revise that and see if I can figure out how much happened in Bezu and um and and update that information because I'm pretty sure um, that repo is not included in the list of indie repos. So that's why that's down. Okay. Um yeah, so any any information you have, as I say, the um the I put it in draft pending a some feedback and, and talking about it on this, but then I'll I'll switch it relatively soon before Thursday anyway into um, uh, ready for review. So if you could get your your information back to me by um, you know tomorrow tomorrow afternoon, that would be good. Wednesday afternoon. Yeah, That's absolutely. Better. Sending out that link as well to the chat, and it is also linked here in the in the meeting notes so good thanks awesome anything anything else on the indie quarterly report from anyone all right so on the ubuntu 22.04 upgrade um let's see kim or or wade are there any updates there uh, I was I've been away last week, so mm -hmm. I haven't had a chance to um, review the PR that uh, Kim submitted yet. Cool. Uh, no updates for me on it. Okay. Sounds good. Let's see. Then, in terms of the indie charter document. Um, so again, the the feedback is due by the end of day tomorrow, end of the month. Um, and let's see, one one thing that I thought would be great to discuss on this call is, um, do we want to keep the Hyperledger name? I, I checked with David Boswell and he said that um, that's up to the Indie maintainers. The Hyperledger brand will continue under... Linux Foundation Decentralized Trust, and there will still be projects that use the Hyperledger name, but projects will also have the option to drop the name if they'd prefer. Um, but those projects do need to go through a trademark review to make sure that they can use the, the new name without Hyperledger. So we just kind of wanted to get a sense of, of how people feel about keeping versus dropping the name. Uh, yeah, Kim. Um, so. I have a question about the project here. Why is it separate from the Aries uh, projects as far as working with the Linux Foundation? So I, I think they're just wanting to uh, have separate charters for each project. Um, so I know Aries is going through its own charter draft um, review. Uh, does that answer your question? Not entirely. Um, uh, it, it seems like a, a lot of administration work for something that's closely tied to the Aries group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, um, yeah, handed this, this draft by, um, by, yeah, David Boswell and, and, and asked to, um, oh. review it and, and have discussions with it on the call. So I'm not sure exactly what conversations went into deciding, about having different charters for the different projects and and having that separate from Aries. So yeah, I'm not sure I have too much more context on that, unfortunately. I think 
basically the they they made the they've made the decision to go to Linux Foundation decentralized trust and turn all of the projects that exist within Hyperledger into a, essentially a higher level project in that there's a technical steering committee for each project and there's a um, and and more independence for each one mm -hmm. if they want it and that and Kim I agree with you it's it's a lot of overhead um, mm -hmm. to add to each of the projects so I'm uh, it, you know as far as the rationalization behind it I I don't fully understand it but I just know what they've asked us to do yeah let's see Patrick you've got your hand up yeah, I just want to say I kind of like Hyperledger and these, so I'm in favor of keeping it. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah, uh, thank I, you. I agree. I think we should. Yeah. Uh, Kim? Um, so uh, with this being a, a, a decentralized ledger, um, are we going to include things uh, like the, um, sorry, drawing a blank here, um, the did web underneath this project or is did web going to be considered a separate project like did tdw yeah that, sorry it's edw my apologies yeah that's it, it it's going to be a did method uh, probably under um diff slash w3c so yeah it'll be separate from this Like I, I kind of like indeed just being focused on the blockchain technology. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, and yeah, like the did web stuff is really a did method to, uh, you know, use web servers to publish did documents and other objects. Uh, I think Hyperledger Indy should focus on the you know the technology for the the nodes and the the blockchain and have other things separate you know like uh, aries anon creds these are separate things you know anon creds is even though it came from indy uh the goal is that you can use anon creds on other components other blockchains web servers and for for me as far as i, I understand it aries is more around you know, did come communication, wallet, keys, credentials, um, and Hyperledger in the, uh, yeah, I think focusing it around like the, the actual blockchain technology makes sense for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kim, feel free to jump in. Um, so uh, perhaps if we're focusing on blockchain technology, um, uh, maybe we should have a shift here of not just focusing on um, the indie ledger itself, but also look into um, supporting other blockchains because I think um, there'll be interest in a lot of other blockchains other than just indie. And I think keeping such a narrow focus um, uh, may have us miss out on opportunities to use other uh, technologies there. Uh, Patrick, feel free to jump in. I think that, that, that's interesting, especially uh, with the discussion around the Indy 2.0, where you know there was mention of leveraging uh, Bezu, um, you know, and there's the Hyperledger Fabric project. I'd be curious what the Hyperledger Fabric groups are thinking, you know, with this, because they're sh surely affected by this same kind of discussion here. Um, and m maybe someone with more historical background can correct me, but at the beginning, wasn't Hyperledger exactly this meant to uh, have different ledger technologies like Fabric in the uh, in Bezu, and then as time evolved, other project came about because Hyperledger does have the name Ledger in the name, which makes me think of a <laughs> of Ledger or a blockchain. Uh, 
Is that yeah, a fair? Yeah, that's certainly, certainly the case. Um, Aries spun out of Indy, um, and because it, it used Indy but didn't have to use Indy and, and was also, you know, client side and non cred spun out of Indy um, just to try to enable those technologies to be used on with different ledgers and different, you know, did technologies. So that's, that is how it evolved. It started as purely ledger. And I think that's part of the move here is, is to, you know, allow it to be in, allow the projects that are independent of ledgers to move independent of ledgers. Yeah, because I I'd be curious to ask like the Bezu and the Fabric group, maybe the the blockchain projects could keep the name Hyperledger than their name and just you know simplify what Hyperledger means, and then you know other projects can go wherever they they see fit. Like I could see that as a great great idea or consolidate them under just Hyperledger and Hyperledger would encompass in the Bezu fabric. I don't know. That's a good point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Kim, keeping in mind the the work with um, Indy Bezu with that project, are there other blockchains in addition that, that you'd like to see Shifting to support. Um, I don't have specifics at the moment, um, mm -hmm. but um, with uh, the, the the danger of being a smaller um, uh, a smaller blockchain technology uh, with the indie environment is we have a smaller test base and so we're more likely to have potential issues that aren't discovered by us whereas uh blockchains that are have more users have more um pressure to find and discover bugs um and so i i think being able to support different blockchains uh, would be valuable um especially ones that have other uses outside of uh, decentralized identity yeah i think that's a good point i'm thinking of other things like in the uh, hyperledger bevel right which is a blockchain deployment ansible based project you know so like uh, yeah i think having a look at all the hyperledger projects and identifying those that are based specifically around ledger and blockchains, whether it's blockchain technology in itself or project like Bevel, which is about deploying blockchain, or I think there was another project, I forgot which one it is, but it was to interact with uh, a different kind of like I'm seeing here, I don't know what Firefly is or Iroha or Cactus, but trying to look which projects are based around blockchain technology, reaching out to these groups and asking them what their um, feedback is around this and maybe consolidating all the blockchain based project, you know, associating with Hyperledger and the, the other projects having them being rehomed. Uh, you know, with, with Aries, something else we're seeing is a lot of the actual frameworks go to the Open Wallet Foundation. So I think at the moment, there's really only Akapai left uh, as the like official Aries framework. Uh, so there's definitely a, a shift that could happen on that side. And, um, you know, Anon Creds is moving more towards the data integrity direction with W3C. Um, so, yeah, I think creating a stronger link between Hyperledger, the name Hyperledger and blockchain-based project is a, is a good idea. Yeah, absolutely.
So does it seem like there's consensus around keeping the, the Hyperledger name for the Indie project? I think it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, the The only question I have is if the mission of our project is just to build a distributed ledger or to support um, uh, uh, other blockchains as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that that's kind of my question about the mission and scope of the project here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you say support, um, like what how what angle do you see support? Like support between indie and other blockchain, or just uh, like what 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 do you see by support? Not a hundred percent sure. I'm just exploring the concept that, um, yeah. It, it, if the mission here is to build a distributed ledger, does, does that mean that we're only building a distributed ledger on um, a single blockchain, or are we uh, looking at supporting other blockchains from the Indie project perspective, or does that get covered underneath the the other projects? Yeah, I, I think Indie in itself should should focus on, on Indie, the, the blockchain. But like if you look at, at like Bizu, right? From what I understand, it's more of a Ethereum blockchain client for digital identity. Correct me if, I, if I'm wrong. Um, so that's kind of a, an example of a project that supports other blockchain technology. Uh yeah. So is like Hyperledger in the, I think, should focus on the code, right? The in the code and making sure it works and focusing on, keep, you know, upgrading systems and security fixes and uh, this sort of, uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't know if at this point, well, you know, also thinking about adding features to that specific blockchain you know there there's been talks around this uh redaction features uh and keeping the focus on the the, the actual code of indie i think is is a good good idea um now how does that affect supporting other blockchain that's interesting like there's like i said there's other project like bezu you know, which is Ethereum based. There's Bevel, which focuses more on uh, infrastructure deploying, you know, Ansible scripts for deploying networks. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, I know this is not really an answer, but just sharing some some of my going some of my thoughts face to that. But I think that's a good uh, good question. I I just I don't think like for example the the a call like this in the contributor call. Uh, I think should be focused on indie. You know, I, I think there's enough uh, with just the indie code base in itself to warrant a focus group. Uh, I think if it it just gets to a broader sort of all blockchain, uh, would probably make it a bit difficult to move forward. Yeah, it could be worth um, seeing how other ledger focused hyperledger projects are are dealing with this, and if they are wanting to widen their scope at all, and if, as was said, if if there should be any um, kind of consolidation and stronger collaboration across the the projects of hyperledger that are particularly ledger focused. So in terms of, as this is written here, do we want to widen this this um, statement of the mission or does it seem okay as it is? I would leave it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with what you said about Indy, Indy focusing on Indy itself. Um, 
but I think it's a really helpful discussion too. Does anybody else have any thoughts? And the, like there's already production use case for this, right? So we need to keep a, a focus there. And a lot of them are government use cases, uh, big organizations. So it makes sense to keep a focused group, at least on that, that code base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, Kim, you make really good points about um, having a, a smaller test base and, and wanting to make sure we're able to discover issues um, related to having a, a smaller blockchain technology. Um, and so I think it could be a good idea to kind of strengthen collaboration and, and support with other projects. Let's see, in terms of, so the, the technical steering committee. Um, so it looks like to start off with the technical steering committee, voting members are initially the project's maintainers and there's some different policy and rules laid out here about um, electing, a, let's see, a, about a, exactly how the TSC operates, um, electing a TSC chair um, who will preside over meetings of the TSC. Um, so that's something to think about. Um, voting as well is laid out here. Um, some discussion of compliance with policies and potentially adopting a, a code of conduct um one of see. the one of the big topics in there is if, if you go back to the maintainers list the maintainers mm -hmm. list has not been maintained um one of the things i'm doing is suggesting on the toc that first of all the maintainers list no longer is an active um function but but the actual maintainers list is maintained in another repo and it's mm -hmm. tied around um, um, uh, basically GitHub permissions. So there's an, an entirely another repo. Um, so a lot of the maintainers on that list are, are unmaintained. So we've got to figure out who actually is involved. Like, obviously, we haven't seen Brent Zendel, Daniel Hardman, Richard in years. Um, so they, they should be off Nathan George, you know, and so on. So mm -hmm. we really need a maintenance pass if we're actually going to put this idea that the TSC for Indy, um, will be the maintainers when we don't have an accurate list. So that's, that's one concern I've got with that charter mm -hmm. is, yeah, is we get it. Then maybe the yeah. thing is just put another PR in. Um, I'll try to find the link to the actual place. Hang on one sec. Oh, the separate, the separate yeah, place what, for the maintainers. What stuff. actually maintains it? It's in the governance repo. Yeah, oh, okay. accesscontrol.eml. Hang on, I'll show you. Yeah, because this is the list for Indie Plenum, and then this is this is the list for um, Indie Node. So. Yeah, so if you look at um, this list, this is the actual list of all of the teams. Um, and, and all of this is from a GitHub basis, but and, and that's really what a maintainer is, right? Uh, accelerated, uh, escalated privileges inside the GitHub repos. And mm -hmm. if you scroll down to, there's an indie section, obviously, in here somewhere. There you go. Um, and, um, so here's where you find the list of all of those with extended, um, capabilities. Okay. And then, and then what you've got is each repo has a list of teams and, um, and, and so it all flows down from this file. Mm -hmm. 
I think repos may even have individual individuals, but I'm not sure of that. Hopefully that's been eliminated. But it certainly okay. gets that this is the actual thing that defines who the maintainers are. Yeah. Okay. The plan right now is I've been talking to, you know, I don't know who, you know, if anyone has done the work or will do the work, but, but the whole idea is to generate a per repo um, list of, of members so that, so that we can, so the idea was beside this governance access control.yaml, we would have a per repo file that lists the maintainers in Markdown and uh, and a GitHub action that every time this access control.yaml gets generated, all of those um, Markdown files get updated. And then the, the maintainers.md file in the repo would point to that, and then it would always be up to date. Yeah. So anyway, the bottom line is the there's kind of two problems with that project charter. One is that the maintainers of the TSC, and mm -hmm. two is the maintainers list in Indy is not up, up to date. Mm -hmm. That needs to be adjusted. So would you say that this list is is the uh fairly up to date this list is completely accurate for who has permissions uh-huh so yes 100 percent accurate the problem is things like having you know daniel hardman and 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 um uh, richard esplin and and nathan is is not good because they have nothing to do with the project these days they haven't been around for several years uh-huh uh -huh. So it's just so it's accurate but out of date. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't reflect who is actually involved in the community. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't think your name appears on any of this, and that's bad. Mm -hmm. Patrick, did you have your hand up earlier? No, it's fine. Uh, I, I was going to make a comment towards uh, can some of these repos be consolidated, maybe or something. But uh, looking at this list, it seems like, um, yeah, a lot of projects have many repos, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah. just right down to the bottom. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's a second section. Yeah, go. Yeah, all the way. All the down. way to the bottom. Uh, yeah, and then. Yeah, so what you've got here is the name there is a repository. And then you've got the teams that have various permissions. Yeah. So okay. read only, for example, if you look at that, read only is a hyperledger level read only team that's defined at the top of this. And then security managers is another one that's a high level. And then TOC is another one. And now you get the Web3J admins. That is a team that's defined up above. So all of these teams are defined above. And then this defines the permissions within the repo Web3J dash unit. So mm -hmm. that's how this is constructed. So, you know. Yeah, it just, it just looks a bit complicated. When, it, when you it looks look complicated, it, but it's but, very... Uh, um, Makes sense. Yeah. It, it makes sense. Like before, what would happen is we would put a change into a maintainers.md and then we, uh, Rye would go and make a, a, a change to the actual settings and blah, blah, blah. Here you just, whenever you want to make a change, you submit a PR to this access control.yaml. Mm -hmm. So it's all centralized and easy to do. Um, the problem is the maintainers.md file are still referenced as being accurate, but they're not. Right. So do we want this um, governance access control file or the indie maintainers list to be the, the source of truth? Oh, this is the source of truth, source of truth. So, so access this is control. the one we should access. Update. No, 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 sorry. Access control is the source of truth. Okay. So what has to happen? So what I'm, what I'm pushing for is, as I say, that 
there be an MD file, like if I look at that bottom thing, web3j-unit, that there be a web3j-unit.md file generated from this mm -hmm. that lists all of the people on all of the teams that are listed here and what permission they have in the repo. Mm -hmm. And then the MD file, like you were looking at before, like in Indie Node, it would contain a link to that. Here are the actual maintainers and it would contain a link to that file that generated mm -hmm. file. Does that make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we don't have to maintain this at all. This becomes just contact with a link to the current um, people that have escalated um, permissions in the repo. Right, right. Actually, this raises a question for me. Um, so we just talked about does the group want to maintain Hyperledger in the, uh, but Hyperledger is being uh, moved over to trust over IP decentralized trust. Yeah. Does that actually need that we'll need to rename in the to Hyperledger in the under decentralized trust? It, no. Because Okay. Like you mean from a repository name? Uh, no, just like conceptually, like we so we so would we, have Hyperledger in the under trust over IP digital yeah, decentralized so trust. From a from a branding and a trademark perspective, it's always been Hyperledger in the yeah, um, and remains so unless we change it. Okay, so, so we're more talking like on the branding side and exactly. Recognition, yeah. yeah, because right now, like Hyperledger, it was like it's the foundation, and then the project is indie. Uh, but now the the branding would remain Hyperledger indie, but under <clears throat> decentralized trust. And and to be a little more precise, under Hyperledger, each project had the Hyperledger prefix under it, so it was Hyperledger okay. Foundation and then Hyperledger indie. Now it's decentralized trust Hyperledger indie. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. it stays the same. Yeah. Stays the same. Exactly. Unless we decide to change it. Yeah. And we don't need to rename the repo. I think we can live with. Exactly. Just Definitely, in not. The... Definitely not. So, um, so do we want to, I mean, should we make the list? now and I could put in a PR to update this or just trying to think about next steps um, yeah. <laughs> specifically for this. this I know, I know. <laughs> um, like this, it's it's broken for every project. It's not just indie. Yeah. So I'm trying to push this at the TOC level. Like I'm a member of the Hyperledger TOC. So I'm trying to push this at the, at the, TOC level, I'd love somebody to create a access control .yaml GitHub action that produces all the MD files. That would be step one. Mm -hmm. And then, but the other thing that Indy could do is actually fix this list to be accurate. Um, for Indy specifically. For Indy, yeah. And that's a bit <laughs> fraught, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit tricky. Who do we take off? Yeah. How do we notify them we're taking off? It's uh, who wants to do that? It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I mean, I feel like adding is the easier part. We could have step one be to add. Yes, that's and a then good later, idea. Yeah. Later, come in and and clear out whoever is is no longer like almost in the every. Like there's indie admin right mm -hmm. at the top, and probably you know as I say, that should be made accurate. Like even that one, making that accurate would probably be the oh best. indie admin. Uh huh. Yeah. Like okay. Adding a few more people into that. Okay. Current um, current, current people into that. Yeah. Yeah like attendees of this call. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and I can I can just 
looks like I, I could just create a PR against. Oh, absolutely. This. Yeah. Okay. And okay. then if, if you do do that, I would, I would flag everyone that you remove and everyone that you um, add into the PR so they get notified of it. And then oh, anyone, okay. can, anyone can raise any issues with it. Okay. And I think I'll just stick with adding for now rather than removing. Sure. If that's sure. okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So I will add everyone who is on this call currently. And then let's see, thinking of who else usually attends the call. Um, I know Renata has been in and out of this call um, j just today. I don't know if there's been internet issues or something. Um, or, yeah, I think having Renata on it would be a good idea. Yep, yep. Um, let's see, oh, Lynn as, as well. Yep. Let's see. Other other names I should be sure to add. Or do, does that sound like a pretty good list? Patrick? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Can I add me? Yep. Yeah. Cool. I've got you down. would be a bad idea. Kim? Yep. Uh, yes, Kim. Um, so uh, contributors um, here are listed in our um, Hyperledger and the technical charter draft. Is anyone that's contributing code documentation or other technical artifacts. Um, I think that might exclude Char and others that are attending this call if they're mm -hmm. not actively contributing code or mm -hmm. documentation or technical artifacts, obviously. So we might want to expand that language slightly. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. What what was the uh, the the comment? Uh, the the comment is that um, uh, Char is actively involved in uh, helping manage the project, but she's not actually contributing um, any code documentation or technical artifacts potentially to the project. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that we include everyone that we intend to include on the call here as uh, qualifying yeah. as a container. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you're contributing to any extent, doesn't not necessarily code, but Shar has contributed code to Indy in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and contributes, uh, I would include the wiki and so on. Yes. That. So mm -hmm. I'm more mm -hmm. than happy to have Shar included in that. Okay. Um, cool. And does it seem like we should expand this language at all? Um, uh, I think it's fine. I mean, I don't know. Is it a wiki kind of documentation in a way? Yep. All right, cool. I just wanted okay. to make sure that uh, we felt comfortable. Yeah, no, it was good. Yeah, comment. yeah. I thanks for bringing that up. I yeah, think we're happy with yeah. it. Yeah. We want to be inclusive. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Let's see. Um, for now, should I just update this list under Indie Admin instead of going as granular to each of the specific repos? Yeah, I, I would say just admin. Okay. And it covers them. Yeah. Okay. And then let's see. And I, um, I would say for admin, I would remove those three. Go ahead and remove them. These three? Yeah. All right. Okay. And the same one, as I say, if you would just tag them at them in a comment saying, 
because they have not been active for a period of time, we're removing these three and adding these three or this, however many. Okay. I think that's a reasonable thing to do. And I, I'm sure Daniel, Richard, and, and Nathan will care. Okay. Sounds good. Um, let's see. And then uh, it'll be great to have the the um, the file generated um, from this yeah. list that will yeah. populate here. But I think since this needs to go in tomorrow, um, maybe yeah. I could just uh, add in a note to say like, here's the link to the, the updated list. Yeah. Um, okay. That sounds good. Actually, you know what? I'll I'll try putting an update into here. In in here. Into the uh, document because okay. I'd like to do it for the TOC. Uh huh. The TOC. So I think I'll do that if you don't okay. mind. Okay. Yeah. Please. Thank you. And and what I'll do is just I'll I'll reference that the TSC voting members will be the um, admin <laughs> team in the admin team. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> And we'll just go from there. Yeah. Let's just Sounds see how good. that goes. That's the most accurate thing there is. So there you go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. I'll remove these three. And then um, in terms of the list, I've got um, Stephen, Kim, Patrick, um, Renata, Lynn, uh, myself, Let's see, Sam, um, and is there anyone else I should be sure to add as well on this pass? Or does that sound like a, a good list for now? And of course it can be added too. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. And then, yeah, thank you for adding that note to direct um, direct people to this as the, the most updated yeah. source of truth. Yeah, for the TSC role. Yeah. yeah. I think that works better. And I'll yeah. take that to the TOC itself. Okay. Here's the wording we put in. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, so it seems like those were the main discussion points on the charter. Just the the um, do we want to keep the hyperledger name, the mission and scope of the project, the details around the technical steering committee. Um, let's see. Are there any other aspects of the charter that we should discuss as a group? All right, cool. Well, that was a super helpful discussion. I know we had one last thing on the agenda, uh, which was Indy Bezu updates, um, but I don't see Renata here. So I, I think we can get updates on that um, next meeting and, and we're just about out of time as well. Uh, let's see, are there any other topics for the call? Oh, I, I was curious if there were any updates related to the mentorship project. No, really not much to talk about yet. Okay. So cool. Is there is there a specific timeline for when that um, work kicks off? Um, it has kicked off. Um, we've been struggling to find times to connect. So mm -hmm. between Sam, Brian, and myself, we haven't um, been very successful at getting together. Um, but that will change now. 
Yeah, cool. <laughs> Got to get going. <laughs> It's, it's yeah. not due till November, so there's still time. Um, so yeah, not that concerned about it, but um, we definitely need do need to be starting making more progress. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, yeah, I'm excited to hear about how that is going. Um, let's see. Yeah, are there any other final uh, announcements or or discussion points for the last few minutes? Yeah, why don't you make that a regular entry on the uh, agenda okay. and, uh, you know, mentorship progress and demos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so hopefully we can see things as things go along. Yeah, that'd be super cool. Yeah, yeah. cool. So the new new uh, regular entries will be the mentorship progress and demos and then the yeah. um, did TDW progress yeah. as well. That'll be great to hear about regularly. All right, cool. Yep. With that, um, thanks everyone for joining. This was a, a great discussion. We made a bunch of progress. So thank you um, for being here. Thanks. Cool. Well, we'll see you all in two weeks. Have a good rest of your day.